Hello, I'm Chris Menard. This video is a request video. I've been asked to show how to do running totals in Microsoft Excel. I'm going to do three different ways. The only way that I actually prefer is the last way I do it, but I still want to show you the other two. And by the way, there's more than three ways to do this. The file that I'm using will be available to you. So if you get lost, I want to go from scratch so I can explain running totals. I'll have this file for you, which has some worksheets with our data already in it. So let's start though from scratch. I'm going to run, I'm going to do running totals by month. So if we make $20 in January and the next month we make $30, the first month is 20 running totals. The two months together are $50, 20 and 30. So just to do this as an example, I'm going to do the word month in A1, J-A-N in A2, get your crosshairs, bottom right corner, auto fill that down until you get to December. You want to track something numeric, so the number one and the number two in B2 and in B3, highlight both those numbers, not just one of them. Auto fill crosshairs, just double click. If double click doesn't work, drag down. Here we go, RT, running totals. Method one, my least favorite method, but if I had, if I, if I was sitting around with a pencil and a piece of paper, this is what I'd be doing. Equals B2 plus B3, or one plus two. Now I'd go equals the B3, which is the running total for the first two months, plus month three. So I should get the number 10, then the number 15, and we're in business, it's working, that was a test. 78 would be my running total for the year. We start off in January, ended in December. December is 78, least favorite way. Method two, let's use a formula. Go to cell C2 and do the sum function, equal sum, hit the tab key. Puts in the open print. I'm gonna go from B2 colon B2. Close. I know this function sounds kind of silly in cell C2, but I'm going to end up autofilling it down. The problem is with running totals, I need the very first B2 to stay absolute or absolute reference. To do that, you click on the first B2 and on the keyboard, hit the F4 function key. If you're on a laptop, the F4 key may not work unless you hold down your function key on the keyboard. The function key on a keyboard laptop is usually three places to the left of the space bar. It'll have the letters FN on it frequently, which means function, but it's F4. If none of those work, just type the dollar signs yourself. So here we go. Here's why I made that absolute reference. When I pull it down, I get the number three, but look at the formula bar. It's B2 absolute reference colon B3. Crosshairs, I should get the number six. I'm working, I'm good. Drag down, I got 78 again. So there is method two, running totals using an Excel function. If you did not get that and you're trying to follow along with me, I've got a worksheet called complete at the bottom. When you click on it, it has what I just did. Method three, the absolute best method. Start here. I've already covered this. I'm going to make a pivot table. And what I've already covered is before you make a pivot table, there's always three rules to follow. No blank rows and no blank columns. Rule number two is your data has to be in a tabular format, which my data is. So rule one and rule, rule one and two are complete. Rule three, I recommend you don't actually have to do this one. But I recommend you make it a table which I already have. So I had a data range in here and I've already converted it to a table with control and the letter T. When you do control T, it's going to say create table. You click OK and it puts in table design. And it puts in the different colors shading. I have a video on why you want to make this a table. It's up in the, up in the top right now. Also, it's in my description down below on YouTube. I discuss these three rules about before you make a pivot table. But here we go. I want to still do running totals, 
But unlike this first exercise that we just typed in, January only had one number. All the months only had one number. If you look over here, look, I've got all the months, but they repeat because we're doing invoicing. So I not only have to do running totals with this, I've got to sum up January. I've got to sum up February, March, April. So there'll be a lot of work in here. And just in case you're wondering, there's 576 rows of data because the top row is a header row. So this would take forever using either one of the methods I just showed you. That's why pivot tables are so cool. A pivot table will use calculations automatically. It'll summarize your data automatically, use it for analysis. And I don't have to type any words equal sum equals average. So not only am I going to do this by month, I'll do it by month first, and then I'm going to throw a twist on here. I want to do it by automobile brand, which is column B, and then by month. So this is going to be a lot of fun right here. Here we go. Click in here once. Insert at the top. Pivot table over to the left. It picks up that I got a table. It says table one. That's perfect. Put it on a new worksheet. Yes. Click OK. Your header row or your fields show up over here to the right. Here we go. I'm going to take the month and drag and drop it into the rows. I should get January through December in column A, and I do. I'm going to take the invoice amount, drag, and drop it into the values. By default, it summed up the invoice amounts. But I want to do running totals. I'm still going to leave the sum, so I could get rid of this right now, but I don't want to. This right here on this worksheet called Sheet 1 is very similar to what I have right here except for column C. So watch this. Here we go. This is why pivot tables are so cool. Take the invoice amount again, drag it and drop it into the values a second time. In column C, it says sum of invoice amount to. I can change that name to running totals. Watch this. Right click with me on cell C3. Show values as. So this is a pivot table feature. Running totals in. I've only got one field called month. Look, there it is. When I hit OK, watch. So January equals January. February running totals 272. Highlight these two numbers. Look in the bottom right corner. It says the word sum. It says 272. Let's one more test. Highlight three numbers. Bottom right corner, 473, 473. So there is my running totals using a pivot table. Now, let's get fancy with this. I've got the running totals by month, but I also would like to see the running totals by brand, then by month. Remember the brands were uh, Ford, Acura, GMC, the car brands. So I'm going to take the word brand. I'm going to drag it. I want the brand before the month. So if you notice, I could either put it below the month or above the month right here in the row area. I want it above it. So I'm going to drop it right here. Look, <laughs> everything is still correct. If I highlight these numbers, four numbers are selected. That takes me through April 787-787 for Acura. Highlight a few BMW numbers because that's what I have next. I don't care. I've got five selected. 105, 105. Everything's good. Pivot tables. Can you imagine trying to do running totals manually with this data? You would have to sort by brand, then by month, and then do a calculation and keep doing calculations. It would take you forever. We just did it with a few clicks using a pivot table. Feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I appreciate all the support you've been giving me. Feel free to keep asking me questions. Thank you so much. Have a good week.